Well hi there folks, glad you could be back enjoying this. Well I hope it's enjoyment for you. Um, this little section or this little tutorial is to help you use the revolve feature in, um, in Creo Parametric. So the revolve feature is a pretty useful sort of gadget. Um, it's great for making shapes that lend themselves to an axis of symmetry and they're circular. They have circular patterns. So here's a sphere, got a hole in it. This is, we'll do this simple revolve shape, create a sphere and put a hole in it using the hole function. And then uh, after that, I want to go to a different shape, which is this shape here. And this lends itself to being revolved as well, about a center line, an axis. It's right through the middle there. So this is a really uh, an F1 Formula 1 plastic uh, tyre for the beginning level of Formula 1 racing in schools. Now we'll just get this shape going and then we'll, we'll be able to do more things with it. So let's start. We'll open up a new file and it's going to be a part. It's going to be a solid. I'm going to call it Sphere 3. Let's do that. Okay, Creo opens up. There's my three axes, my three planes that I'm used to seeing. And uh, to start off with, let's let's select a sketch to do a sphere. We'll start with a sphere. Let's select a sketch. And Creo will then say, where do we want to sketch it? Let's pick this front plane over here. It's a front datum plane. And I'll agree with what it's asking me to do regarding placement. Yes, I want to sketch on that plane. There's my blue crosshairs, which I'm used to. Now, I want to look at this on the front view. So if I go up to the AB, little AB box here, and it says Named Views, I'm going to choose Front. Makes it a bit easier for me to look at it front on here. All right, now the next thing is a familiar operation for us. We're going to create a circle. And we're going to do this in Sketch. So start from the middle of the universe. It's always a good idea. Um, and select the spot. We've got a... Oh, we want to choose a center and point circle. That'll make it a bit easier for us. Center and point circle. Now, true to form, although we're um, we're doing another circle, it's another part. I want to be able to make this a 50 millimeter diameter circle, just so that it matches up with our cube that we've done before. Hit 50, and there's my 50 millimeter diameter circle. Now you notice inside the boundaries of the circle, it's lightly shaded. That means that the geometry is such that. Um, there are no loose ends. There's no little holes or vertices poking out of lines that don't meet. So Creo will treat that as a solid geometric shape with definite bounds all the way around. And it'll highlight it in, shade it in like you see there. And that's important for us when we do uh, revolves. Because if the shape isn't shaded, it means that there's some hole in it and Creo won't be able to revolve. Alright, now the next thing to probably be useful for us to do is we want to split this shape in two. So... Uh, We'll use a, a line up here on the line sketching toolbox. Not a line tangent, but I want to use a line chain. So I'm going to use a line chain, which means one line after the other. So it's sort of like the line stick to the end of your cursor. I'm going to draw one right down the center here, and it'll snap to the right position. So if I move my cursor now, you'll see the line will move. But if I left click it, it'll stay there, but then it extends further. So it's like it's stuck to my cursor. To unstick it, uh, it's enough just to click your center mouse button and you unstick it. So we've got a circle with a line bisecting it right down through the middle. Okay, that's fine. Now, next tool, which is a very useful tool, is this one up here called Delete Segment. It's sort of like the squiggly line that allows you to be able to draw through, and you notice how as I've drawn through this squiggly line, it's highlighted in green, and it will now delete, Creo will delete, the line in between the next two geometry reference points. So if I click that there, see it's deleted that quarter of a circle because it has a geometric reference point halfway down, geometric reference point at the top, I deleted the line. I want to do the same for this side because I want to actually get a semicircle happening here. Now this is good because I'm going to actually revolve this semicircle around this north-south axis to create my sphere. So I'm going to click OK, tell Creo that I'm, I'm happy with this. And all things going well, this shape should be a happy shape. Now let's just suppose, for example, that we didn't get everything right and some of the lines didn't meet. I'm going to highlight this by left-clicking, highlight the blue sketch uh, operation that I've just done. I'm going to click Edit Definition to bring it back again. 
Now notice how it's shaded in, so Creo does regard this as one um, bounded entry. But let's suppose that we weren't sure about it. Over here, up on the left hand or right hand side, under the dimensions um, tab on the ribbon, you can see create reference dimensions, create ordinate dimension baseline, and up here create perimeter dimensions. We can do all that. Uh, not really that much relevant at the moment, but at some point in time we'll be able to check in this little area. Here it is here. Here it is. So this section here under inspect is probably what I'm looking for. It says overlapping geometry highlights the display of overlapping entities. So if you've created some overlaps, one line's gone on top of another, um, Creo will highlight it using a red dot and it'll show you exactly where so you're aware of it because sometimes the entities are so small and the, uh, the geometry is so fine and so detailed you just don't know where to look. And it won't revolve, Creo won't revolve it if, there is, uh, if the shape isn't, doesn't have integrity, it isn't completely bounded. So that's a useful little function up here to use the overlapping geometry function if you're not sure if your shape is bounded, especially useful when you do more complex shapes. Alright, but our shape is bounded, it's shaded in, so we're happy with it. Okay. Once that's done, we now save it, and once we save it we can use the revolve function. Here it is up here next to extrude, and if we click on this revolve function, we get a change in the toolbar at the top, and it looks a little bit like what we used to see with extrude. Um, similar sort of thing. On the left hand side, we can choose to revolve this as a solid or we can revolve it as a surface so we could create a, a sphere which has an outer skin if you like and hollow in the middle but we want to do it a solid and we can choose which axis we'll revolve it about um, we can choose down here uh, to revolve from a sketch plane by a specified angle value now that's probably the useful most useful thing the angle value here is 360 but we have other options so if I highlight over this just to show you we can revolve on both sides of a sketch plane by half the specified angle and there's another variation further down let's just use this one at the moment we're revolving about an axis by a specified number of degrees and it's 360 degrees so a full revolution now we can remove or replace material and so forth just like we did with um, extrude function. So the thing, look down the bottom here, select a straight or curved edge axis or a axis or axis of coordinate system to specify an axis of revolution. So Creo wants to know which way do I want to revolve this? Do I want to revolve it about the top or about the side or where do I want to revolve it? So really what we're wanting to do is to revolve this feature um, about this north-south axis to give us a sphere. If we revolved it about the axis at the top here, it would give us a donutty shape with a sort of a rounded edge. We don't want to do that. So let's click there. And you can see Creo has done the revolve for us and created that brown shape, which is a sphere. So if I click my center mouse button down and rotate it around, you can see the spherical shape that I've created. Now, when it's created this, it's also worked out some drag handles. So see this little drag handle down here I've got my mouse on? If I can move that drag handle around and I can actually create the shape in varying degrees. So I could specify say 110 degrees here and it will give me exactly 110 degrees almost like a cut out of an orange or an apple. But I don't, I want 360. I want it to go all the way around. Beautiful. So I'm happy with that. That looks good. So I'm going to click OK. Right now the next thing I wanted to do with you just briefly while I can is to look at the area of creating a hole in here. So a hole all the way through this circle like we did with the cubes earlier on. So let's bring it up to the center again first and create our hole. Now the hole function over here is in the engineering um, tab. If you click it you'll find you get again a whole lot of specifications of different sorts of holes and you can do all sorts of create simple holes and you can do threaded holes and holes which have predefined rectangle sections and ones which use threads and so forth alright we can specify the diameter of the hole and I've set it here at 10 as you can see I, I want to do just a simple hole and looking here by now this should become familiar I've got a lot of options this is important. It's Creo is thinking about drilling a hole just like you would in a machine shop and you've got a lot of different ways of drilling this hole. I want to drill a, a hole on each side of placement reference by half the specified depth value. So in effect I want to start from the middle of this sphere and then I want it to drill outwards from either side by half the specified depth value. 
Now, we know it's a 50 millimeter diameter sphere. So, if I give it a little bit larger diameter and I call it, say, 60 millimeters, um, 60 millimeters depth, I should say, that means it should drill out by half, that's 30 millimeters. It should go well beyond the edge of the sphere from the center. So, that's fine. Now, Creo wants to know where am I going to do this hole? Well, I'm going to do it on, on this plane. And notice now it's actually extruded this hole, or drilled this hole, but the hole isn't located in the right pl place. Now, it's got a, a depth of 60, which I specified. It has an axis, but the axis has these two handles on it. So Creo says, well, where do you want this hole to go? Give me some points of reference. So I'm going to drag this fill handle here to the side and pick this plane, the vertical plane that goes through the center of the sphere. And I'm going to use that as one. Now notice as I've done that, it's, Creo has created a dimension, there it is highlighted in green, which gives me the distance from the center of the axis um, of the hole to the center of the plane that goes through the center of the of the sphere. Now I want to make that zero because I want the axis to go right through the center of that plane. So I hit zero. Fine. Now the next one I have over here is another drag handle which I have to reference on another plane to be able to tell Creo exactly where I want it. Let's go for this plane over here. Now at the moment the hole is going through a funny angle <laughs> off to 41 looks like 114.37 millimeters. I want that to be zero as well so it goes through the center axis. There we go. So now both of those two grab handles are referenced to axes up to planes I beg your pardon and I've set both of the distance away of the axis from the plane to zero so the axis is now going through right through the middle of both this horizontal plane and the one that goes away from us over here. So the axis is going straight through the middle there and as you can see I've got a hole going all the way through that sphere. Looking good. Now we could do that in other planes and create different holes all the way through as we chose. But there you go. Hole in a sphere. Click OK and she's done. Hole in a sphere. Looking good. Now I can round those edges if I wanted to or put a chamfer on them. For example if I wanted to throw a chamfer on there, chamfer up here, click chamfer and it's chosen a, a, a 1.05 millimeter chamfer, I can drag that out and make it bigger if I want, looks a bit like the Death Star doesn't it from Star Wars now, um, but there you go, so I can do that to other f faces if I want. Alright, fine with that, let's do something a little bit more complex and we'll do that in the in the next, oh, let's have a look, oh yeah we'll do it now, alright, I'll move right on now. So let's open up uh, a new file and do a slightly more complex shape. It's still going to be a part, it's going to be a solid, and I'm going to call it Tire 2. Click OK. So again, I'm going to create a bit more complex shape now. We'll look from the front of this set of uh, planes. And I'm going to use this sketch function to draw the shape. Creo says where, I want it on that plane. Go ahead. And I'm going to use rectangles. Rectangles are a very useful feature. So I'm going to create a rectangle here. And the dimensions aren't so important for what I want to show you. So there's a rectangle. I'm going to create another uh, rectangle. Uh, this time I'm going to start it from this edge, draw it back, and create it about here. And a third rectangle coming out to there. Now the snap function means that all these lines will be touching. Now I've got a complex shape here but I can't rotate it because there's surfaces inside, there's lines all over the place. So now I'm going to use my remove or delete segment button to clean this shape up. And first I'm going to take off this line here. Sometimes it needs a couple of goes. Yeah, there it is. Now I've got another line coming down the bottom here that I don't want. And I've got a line across through here that I don't want. Remember, I've got to leave myself a solid shape. Okay. So now I've got a shape that runs along the top here, runs through down there, comes down here, down here, down there, down there. I want to check it out and make sure in a minute to, it's a solid shape with completely bounded. So let's click OK at this point for that shape. So here's my shape. Okay. 
If I want to check it, I can uh, edit definition again and look up here where I showed you before that function which lets me check for overlapping geometry. So I click there. Notice how there's a red box here? That little red box indicates that there's a line down here which is some overlapping geometry. And if I were to remove the planes, you'd be able to see it a bit better. Okay, so there's a line poking out here which I don't want to have. So I'm going to get rid of that line using the remove feature here. It's gone now. So now if I check for overlapping geometry, we should be good. Okay, now there's my shape. I'll bring my planes back into view so I can see them because I'm going to need those planes in a minute. So if I bring it into 3D, that's my shape. Now I want to rotate that shape to create a wheel. But there's one more thing I want to do, which I haven't done yet. And I need to create a hole for the axle, which I've forgotten to do. So let's go back to look at front view again. And I'm going to edit definitions by simply right-clicking on that sketch. Edit the definitions. I'm going to create another rectangle in here to allow for a space for the axle. So I'm going to do it to there. Use my remove tool again, which there it is here. Delete segment tool. And I'm going to take out two lines at once now. I should be able to when the computer catches up. There it is. Those two lines. I'll do that again. Make sure it works. It's one. Should be able to get that. The dimensions should disappear. There they are. All right, that's better. That'll leave my hole for the axle when I rotate this shape. So I'll check to make sure there's no overlapping. It looks like it's, it looks like it's okay. Okay. Feature requirements. We're all good. All right, now it's time to revolve. So here in the shape section, choose revolve, and it tells you what revolves about. It's a sketch section around a center line. Create a revolve feature as a solid or surface and add or remove material. So you can do that, it's very useful. So we click revolve and we get the toolbar changing, much like it does on the extrude toolbar. We can choose solid or a as a surface. So I can make this a hollow shape with just a skin or I can use a solid. Um, well before I do this, I should actually show you something else. Um, it's very useful. See these sharp edges here? They're a weakness. Sharp edges concentrate stress. So I'm going to create some small um, rounded edges in there. And those rounded edges are called fillets. So see up here in the sketching bar, fillet? So create a fillet. Now to do that, click on the fillet and then all you need to do is select by highlighting green the two edges that intersect and Creo creates a nice fillet for you the di or the radius that you want. So I'm going to create fillets in here to relieve those stress points for that sharp edges. And that's exactly what would happen on a plastic shape. You would do that. Alright, so maybe we'll do one here too. Fillet there, fillet there, fillet here, fillet there. And I'll leave those as a sharper edge. Okay. Alright, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm ready to revolve as I mentioned before up here. And it's going to, Creo is going to say, well, down the bottom, and you'll look at the little dialog box, select a straight or curve or an edge or an axis or coordinate systems to specify the axis of revolution. Now, I could rotate it around this way and create a mushroom shape, but I want to rotate it around this way, from uh, north to south towards me, so as I can create a, a wonderful wheel, all things going well. So I should be able to highlight that. So that axis there, there it is, right on there. If I bring it a bit closer, it's highlighting green. So that's where I want to rotate about that point, that edge there. And as you can see, Creo has rotated and created for me my beautiful wheel. There it is. Nicely rounded edges, so relieve the stress points and we can then create more shapes on it. But that'll do for the moment. That's quite long enough. Um, enjoy. Make yourself some wheels. And let's get rolling.